Apple's releasing a brand new lineup of Macintosh computers that I feel like I kind of tacked on at the last second with the last Worldwide Developers Conference video. So given that this is now less than a month away, let's talk about all the different Macs we're gonna be seeing in less than a month. I, for one, am personally kind of excited for this because since our goal this year is to hire a second full-time employee, my friend Xander, and we're planning on editing a lot of different stuff at the same time, we're looking to invest in not another iMac Pro, I don't think we can afford that, but probably a 5K iMac. I just sold my MacBook Pro because I don't edit on the go anymore and the Blackmagic footage we shoot with this camera can't be edited on a laptop anyway, but we're waiting for the new refresh of iMacs because it's rumored that they could be getting hexa-core CPUs, the eighth generation Intel cores of course, which are supposed to be getting much, much faster. And of course, having more cores, even if they're at a slightly lower clock speed, can mean great improvement in performance. On top of that, usually around this time of the year, Radeon releases new GPUs specifically built for the Max. So now, of course, we have the 580. We could be seeing the announcement of the 680 or perhaps just kind of the 580X, you know, like the slightly better version of last year's. But either way, improvements all around. One thing that kind of confuses me about the current lineup of iMacs, both between the 21 and a half inch and the 20 27 inches isn't the big bezels but like I understand why people want bezels to be thinner or they want a design refresh because we've been using the same style of iMac for a long time but what confuses me is the fact that they only have two Thunderbolt 3 ports so I'm actually hoping that this year they'll be able to change that like think about it a 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Pro both have four Thunderbolt 3 ports they charge through this but you can also do up to four external monitors 4k ones at 60 Hertz and even with MacBook Pro so these are like four pound and under laptops you can output to two 5K displays at 60 Hertz each using just one port while also simultaneously charging the laptop. How come the iMacs only have two Thunderbolt 3s? They have better GPUs and they're supposed to have better CPUs given they're not mobile, they don't have battery life to worry about, they don't have charge ports to worry about. Why can't the regular tiered 5K iMacs get four or just even three Thunderbolt 3 ports? You don't have as many options as you do with buying a MacBook and I feel like that's kind of backwards. If you're buying a desktop like an all-in-one, you should be able to have more more processing power, more external displays, more Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. And I don't think anyone would be too upset if you just gave it four, just like the iMac Pro already has. Maybe they're trying to make that an exclusive thing. You gotta pay extra if you want four Thunderbolt 3 ports on your iMac. But Apple, could you just maybe meet us in the middle at three so we can hook up three external 4K or potentially 5K monitors, depending on how good the GPU is on this thing? I think that would be an easy way to notice the 2018 iMac separate from the 2017 one. So that's all about space with the new iMacs. Of course, it would be really neat to see new color options. Very curious to see if Apple's are gonna start deciding, you know what, you don't need an iMac Pro to have space gray. Any iMac you wanna buy, you can get a space gray version for. As originally, you had to pay $5,000 to get a Magic Keyboard or Magic Trackpad or Magic Mouse in space gray, but now you can buy them separately. Maybe Apple's gonna cave on the all-in-one's color themselves. Or I've even seen some crazy concepts of like gold iMacs or blush gold iMacs. And you know, I gotta say, they don't look that bad. Diversifying is great. and I always think that every lineup needs more color options. There's never enough. Also wouldn't mind thinner bezels. Apple recently hooked up this Predator monitor to my iMac Pro and while the back end of it is a lot thicker than a regular iMac, the bezels themselves are a lot thinner and that is noticeably nicer. So those are a lot of the stuff we could be seeing in the desktop realm, but a lot of you aren't there. A lot of you guys are looking for laptops, so what could be coming to the 15-inch MacBook Pro in 13-inch? Most rumors are suggesting that as Apple's moving to this eighth generation of Intel processor, we're gonna be finally seeing a quad-core CPU in a smaller size 13-inch MacBook Pro, which would be really neat for people who don't wanna spend all that money to get a 15-inch, but still want even better processing power. Now, this is a bit of a stretch. I'm not sure if I believe this one, but there's also some leaks suggesting that the 15-inch MacBook Pro could, alongside the iMacs, be getting hexa-core CPUs. That would be an insane amount of power for a laptop that light. Earlier last year, though, there were some reports saying that maybe Apple's working on trying to get some MacBooks cheaper and perhaps they're working on MacBook models that will not have the touch bar. And even if you want to get something with a dedicated GPU or with a quad core CPU, you'll be able to get it with just regular function keys and not touch ID in order to keep the price lower. Because I think they've noticed from user feedback that a lot of people aren't as terribly interested in the touch bar and touch ID as they were hoping. And that definitely drives the price up a little bit. And I definitely hear you. If you want a 15 inch MacBook Pro, but you just wish it didn't start at $2,400, I think it would be really smart for Apple to kind 
kind of explore that venue, see what kind of options can we make with the MacBook lineup that still give you power, but for a more affordable price. I'm not expecting a design change in the MacBook lineup. I don't think they're going to be adapting the full touchscreen base yet, which is why I think that most of 2018's Macs are probably just going to be internal upgrades, not too much design changes. I think they're going to keep the current look of that 2016 MacBook Pro lineup for probably the rest of this year, maybe even next year, but maybe around 2019, 2020, we'll start seeing some actual design changes to the MacBook lineup. Then comes some new reports talking about a cheaper version of the MacBook Air. Apple's still selling this thing, and it's very confusing because, yes, it is the cheapest MacBook, but at what cost? Think of all the things you're compromising. You're not adapting Thunderbolt 3. You don't even have a retina display. In fact, you don't even have black bezels. The MacBook Air is the last device to actually have aluminum bezels on the side. The old style keyboard, the old style trackpad, the one that actually clicks down, and the old style ports, including MagSafe. And probably to a lot of you, you like that kind of thing. Maybe a lot of you are watching this on your MacBook Air and you like that old design. You like the old ports. It works. It does what you need it to and that's great. I'm happy for you. But I'm personally just surprised Apple is still running this thing and still selling this thing brand new because it really hasn't seen any improvements for the last couple of years. So maybe what we're going to see in June is an actual just internal slight upgrade, but maybe in an effort to keep the price as low as possible. Because that's what a lot of these rumors are saying. Apple's working on a more budget-friendly MacBook so that they can keep the starting price for that MacBook lineup around the $800, $900 mark, which is still pretty expensive when you look at the competition of notebooks they're dealing with between Windows 10 laptops and Chromebooks. So I don't really see the point in diving in that direction. I know some students like having keyboards, but Apple seems to be really pushing iPads for education. Even if you're a college student, they would probably recommend you get an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and smart keyboard, and that would likely still be cheaper than a lot of the MacBooks in the current day lineup. And it would have a retina display, and it would have much better methods of taking notes with that stylus. It'd be a more futuristic device, and it would still be cheaper. So I'm a little bit surprised that Apple may be investigating into updating the MacBook Air. I'm not sure if I believe that, but things getting cheaper is never something to be upset about. So if it happens, I'll be happy for you college students out there or just people not wanting to spend too much on laptops. But then also comes the mystery device. Craig Federighi recently was saying some things that were pointing towards the idea of a Mac mini refresh because people were asking him why we haven't updated the Mac mini in so long. That part of Apple's website literally has an old font, like they haven't even touched it. And Craig said that it's an important part of the Mac lineup and they're not trying to abandon it just yet. So hopefully in the next month, we'll actually get to see some USB-C adoption to the Mac mini, maybe some better CPUs, maybe some dedicated GPU, just for people who want Mac OS and they want that power, but they don't need the whole 5K or 4K display hookup. They just need a Mac, cheap and simple, but it works reliably. I'm really hoping that happens because there's definitely a lot of people out there, kind of like the budget Apple sheep. They kind of have their own demographic, you know, people who want the new iPad mini, they want the new iPhone SE, they want a new Mac mini. They're just so pro cheap, which is not a bad thing. It just means that you want to save money and I can't blame you for that. That's a good idea. So I really hope Apple caters to that as it does sound like there's going to be a new iPhone SE at this keynote. So if you're catering to budget users, Mac mini would be a good refresh right now. But in terms of the Mac lineup, on top of all of this, of course, we're going to be getting the new Mac OS. Not exactly sure what it's going to be called, of course, because they change the name every year and it's not based on numbers anymore or names of exotic animals. But that's all of what we could be seeing next month with Macintosh. Here at Talosif, we're planning on investing in a fairly high tiered one that's a 5K iMac. So that's why I'm excited for this. But let me know what you're excited for in the comments below. You're going to get a MacBook Pro, going to get a MacBook Air. If you're thinking about getting one right now, I highly recommend you wait because you're less than 30 days away from the refresh. What your money can buy will be much, much better if you just wait another month. So all that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. And before you leave, don't forget that we'll be doing a giveaway of a 42 millimeter Milanese loop on our Patreon page. Doesn't matter how much you're donating, anything helps support us and try to get our second full-time employee so we can make more content across the Talos of Network. It would really mean a lot to us and that watch band ain't cheap. I wouldn't pay that much for it, so we're hoping one of our Patreon supporters will be able to enjoy it for a much, much cheaper price. So, links are of course in the description and doesn't matter how much you donate, you're eligible to win as long as you're a Patreon donor. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.